All right, this is gonna be a video about pricing and kind of like our experience with pricing. So some of the first products that I ever made were bags and the bags were basically like, they were made in New York and you know, we were basically using a lot of the same material that, sorry, got a message there. But we were getting a lot of the same leather that was like, you know, a lot of high-end luxury brands were kind of like passing on, but it was still like really high quality. It might have been some really slight irregularities to it. So it just, it wasn't like, it wasn't a good product. It was like, it just didn't sort of pass the test for certain brands, but it, it was totally fine. I mean, it's one of those things that if you, if you really looked at it, you know, even if you had the most discerning eye, it was like, it could have been like 50-50 on how that person felt that day on whether it like st stayed in the collection or stayed in the, you know, product assortment or what have you. So the re result though was like, you know, these beautiful products that, you know, just visually and like psychologically, it just made sense for it to be priced the way it was. So like this collection of product that I was selling, I mean, our price points were, you know, $500, $600, $850. I mean, and it was worth every penny because, <clears throat> excuse me, of how the whole process was, the quantity, the, the presentation. So, you know, if you're thinking about pricing, you know, think about kind of the value. Don't necessarily look at like, what is the cost? And it, it will be a cost to it. And you do need to think about it. You know, there's a, there's a really good book called Deluxe. I want to say is the name of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you know, that book kind of talks about markups. I'm pretty sure that's the book that talks about like luxury industry markups, you know, and you can even do probably your own research on like chat GPT or something like that and find a lot more of the backstory of how some of these prices get the way they are. But you know, another example is like, I looked at Warby Parker in the early days and you know, there was always like, they told this story probably a hundred times, if at least it seemed like it, they were talking about how their glasses, when they first had them, you know, produced, they had them all ready to go and they were like priced at like $95 that was like where they settled on, but apparently they had them priced at like 40, bu 40 bucks, 50 bucks or somewhere in that range. And they shared it with like one of their professors and gave them kind of like some tips and research on, you know, what that might, I guess, from a mindset, like what would the customers think? And it turns out that the feedback they got was like, it wasn't believable, like the quality, the presentation, they were already offering like what was perceived to be at that time. You got to remember glasses were and still are, you know, with a prescription in them, you're talking, you know, 500, 600, 700 dollars. There's probably a lot of brands that are kind of disrupting that. But at the time, that was definitely like a, you know, that was a standard to have the pricing be so high. And, you know, they kind of like disrupted that. But from a pricing standpoint, they were at like $40, $50. They had to go up. They went up to almost $100, which that ended up in the consumer, in the consumer's mind, that made it make sense. You know, it was like 99 would have been a little bit too, you know, it felt too salesy. You know, it's kind of like what they said. And then they talked about like the five kind of signified quality, but yet it still was under $100. So it was like a psychological barrier that they... You know, they didn't they didn't cross that barrier of like someone having to think even more about it so it was just like a win-win so <clears throat> excuse me we adopted a lot of that like strategy and a lot of the pricing that we did in the early days you know um we had products you know our very you know we, we did a collection with products that were you know almost 300 retail and you know it was kind of like there was a lot of cost that went into those products but, you know, it was definitely worth it because the process, the presentation, you know, how we source the materials ethically. I mean, there's like a whole, you know, there's a whole process that goes into it. So, you know, I would, I would encourage, 
you know, based off of the experience that I have with this is like, if you're thinking about pricing, think about the cost for sure, but also think about the value and like what makes sense. You know, it's almost like, <clears throat> you know, even like travel, for example, like if I'm looking for a place and I'm trying to figure out, you know, where can I book like a place to stay or something, you know, and I'm going to a new city, maybe I don't know that city as well. And I see all the prices are kind of like in the same general range. You know, that's kind of like in the realm of believability. But then, you know, there's always gonna be like outliers. And some of those outliers might be so much cheaper than kind of like the group that it's almost like not even believable. It's like, well, what's going on with this? You know, why is this, why is this like this? So, you know, I would, you know, say consider that. And then just kind of, you know, let your customers, you know, guide you to some extent. You know, if everybody's pushing back on you and they're like, this thing's, you know, too expensive or it's too, you know, does it, they, they can't see the quality of it. You know, don't assume it's too expensive is one thing. Assume you don't know, you know, you don't really know yet. It might be too cheap. You might need to go up on the price to help people kind of get it. And you know, we still deal with this a lot today as we work with so many different, you know, B2B customers and, you know, we work with them in, you know, like a bulk order capacity. It's like certain things when it comes to customization or, you know, working to come up with a solution that's going to work, you know, they may expect there to be a discount or sometimes they don't expect there to be a discount. And so it, it kind of makes it to the point where, you have to kind of give people sort of what they want. And I mean, it's a good sales book too. I can't, I can't think of the name of it. I'll have to come back and maybe talk about that book, but it's a book that talks about selling. And when you're selling something, it's like, it says something to the fact that, you know, the prospect has already kind of made up their mind like about buying and they kind of have a price in their mind already that they're, you know, considering. So, you know, think about that. They're already thinking, about the they're, they're thinking about a, a price they're thinking about a value you know they're, they're just kind of waiting for you to like you know present them with that offer that's going to make make it make sense so you know i hope that gives you some you know kind of like a tangible practical way i mean there's a lot of books you could probably read on pricing and you know, how to come up with you know selling your product but you know anytime you can you know, kind of use like someone else's, you know, uh, experience or mistakes, you know, have at it. So that's about it. I'm going to sign off. If you're looking for any, uh, you know, help, reach out. There'll be a link in the description. Glad to, you know, learn more about what you're doing and see if we can find a way to work together. Peace.